Uh, hello, I'm Ella. Um, so yeah, as a visual description, I am a brown 23 year old um, PhD student. I have long brown hair. My background isn't especially exciting. It's just my bedroom. But um, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. And thank you to everyone for organizing it. Um, so I'm currently a doctoral student at UCL and I'm actually researching issues of contemporary collecting as well. But my background is mainly in art history um, and my interests largely lie in the field of um, heritage studies, decolonization, social justice and outreach initiatives within the museum sector. Um, I also work in community engagement within the arts and housing separately. But um, yeah, a lot of what I do is driven by my desire for uh, equality and social justice. Um, and today, I mean, I'm very new to this in comparison to everyone else's talks. So I'm a bit blown away, but um, I'm going to be talking about my current research project, which is entitled um, um, Museum as Monday in Shining South Asian Heritage um, in Secular Spaces. And it's exclusively focused on deconstructing the notion of nation embedded within the Victorian Albert Museum, um, especially the South Asia Gallery. And it highlights how national museums can use alternative means of contemporary collecting to offer counter narratives to their colonial acquisitions. Uh, I'm going to very quickly analyze one of the shine figures I focused on, and I'll talk about my findings of the research I conducted with two um, British South Asian participants. Uh, one was a doctor and one was an artist. And both interviews highlight the importance of recognizing the icons and tangible forms of um, cultural heritage. And they use sight, smell, touch, and hearing as well. And I will also highlight the issues I find in museum displays and finish up by reimagining um, this, the display of these domestic objects by placing participants' belongings in the very landscape of the museum. So my research is very firmly committed to giving British South Asians the space and time to reflect on their own histories within the space of the museum, um, which is a site that has historically not really done this. So my research focuses on the ways national museums can alter their existing displays to offer more historically and socially accurate readings within con their contemporary context. So I've just picked one of the shrine figures I focused on, and um, this is from the South Asia Scu uh, Sculpture Gallery in the VNA, and it shows the deities uh, Shiva and Pravati with Ganesha, which um, which is very important to to note that within their original South Asian context, these icons once occupied a predominantly feminine realm of the domestic sphere and um and they have a very intended religious purpose so when we consider this in the context of its current display they now exist in you know across the globe within a historically situated secular site with a very strong emphasis placed on their aesthetic value mm -hmm. um the statues of deities were brought to london from across the indian subcontinent under the guise of british knowledge seeking to gain further information about the lands, which appeared to be so far flung um, um, in the depths of civilization. And to the visitor, the figures would not appear to have once been housed in a religious or sacred space. Instead, they're presented in cabinets quite formulaically, placed one on top of the other in a quite incoherent and confusing arrangement, um, which was more to... Um, highlight their aesthetic capabilities, not their cultural religious value. And it's not uncommon to find these non-Western shrines in national and local museums. Um, if you look at the British Museum's Enlightenment Gallery, the Horniman Museum now has their big world gallery and Manchester Museum's doing amazing work with the uh, South Asian community. Uh, they've got their new lived experience gallery as well. So to British South Asians and specifically Indians of the Mandir, which is translated as like a household worship, is considered a very important permanent feature within the house. Um, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a background before I start talking about it. But um, on the screen, you can see images of my participants' Mandirs within their own homes. And um, 
I guess you can tell there's quite a difference between them and in this participant's um, under, there is actually no physical sculpture. They use images in the absence of a physical deity. But um, my research sort of became framed away around the ways contemporary collecting can aid the storytelling of British South Asian histories and stories within national museums. And it's to show that they're not just aesthetic um, sculptures, but they have very rich history which is rooted in intangible um, heritage as well so um while the con like the conception of the manda is really deeply rooted in faith um there needs to be an acknowledgement of the cultural heritage of south asian diaspora as well within british national museums and within with both of my participants they very like jokingly remarked about how these shrines became flooded and within their own homes as you can see on the screen they became flooded with very random objects like certificates from swimming competitions from when they were nine years old or power league trophies and like jokingly said about how the Monday is, is a place where your mum can hide things that they don't want you to find or break because they know that no one's going there but a lot of recent scholarship surrounding um, contemporary collecting indicates and talks about this um, the way that objects appear in their current displays visitors have like a split second like assumption that visitors make about the depth and quality of their experience so essentially within each museum each visitor that comes with a set of culturally predetermined visual standards and subjective aesthetic tastes and my practice within collecting these stories and objects became rooted in the belief that the museum should be emphasizing the multiple um, different histories and readings of each object rather than just presenting one universal homogenous vision of non-European cultures. And the crux of the museum visit is that texts and labels are often, you know, intentionally or unintentionally either overinterpreted or underinterpreted. And in the case of the South Asia Gallery at the VNA, um, they provide little to no information regarding the acquisition of these icons. And while this information that they do have is not factually incorrect, it does like and it doesn't it doesn't highlight the auspicious nature of the deities which are being presented within the cabinet and the subject um, and meaning of the shrine icons continue to operate within their religious framework but beyond that my participants noticed that the icons were very cleansed from their intangible qualities such as the smell of incense the um the vibrant colors of the other deities the flowers the fruits and the sweets that are offered to the icons within their um domestic spaces so drawing on the notion of power um you know a museum as they exist in their post-industrial and post-colonial context they proclaim to be very inclusion focused but the life of an icon condemned to a glass cabinet sort of highlights the ways that national museums continue to uphold these colonial attitudes and my paper, if I had more time, I, I could delve into it. But um, the museum, my findings, when focused on stories and the issues of contemporary collecting, showed that these, like, the way that I, um, icons are displayed now, that like criticality perpetuates a very subconsciously or, con or consciously, um, like, a very, a very narrow minded view that highlights a very homogenous view of South Asians. But um, working with the two South Asian um, participants, they created stories which no, no longer silence the icons. Um, and the data I collected over a series of interviews, and that was on site. Um, and I gave both of my participants diaries to track their journeys. And this resulted in such like a rich tapestry of stories and physical art making, which was, um, which wasn't even made by the artist, it was actually made by the doctor who had no background of arts whatsoever. And the doctor actually used their own literature to create their own label. So this is how the shrine figure that just over here, you can see, I'm not sure if you can see where my, my mouse is, but you can see that um, they're shown over there in quite a cleansed cabinet. And the work ended up being very transformative. and as we began to collect our contemporary stories and my participants went into their own homes 
to find objects which associated and reminded them of their own experiences they began to provide like these direct counter narratives to the colonial objects which actually are direct references to the acquisitions they have and throughout there was a shared phrases that kept being brought up by the participants and it was phrases like us Britons and culturally insensitive religiously inappropriate and the one phrase which was used by both of the participants was um not white enough to be British but not brown enough to be Asian and I'll wrap up very quickly but um there there's there were deeper questions which were asked as well um in terms of contemporary collecting and that was if we were to place our domestic objects within the national site like the VNA, what would the response be? And in what ways do my participants have the authority to place their objects in the museum over the other people in the communities? And to what extent does their lived experience and what extent are their stories important enough to be there? And one of the questions we spoke about towards the end really was, is it enough? Like are our objects enough to change these prevalent colonial narratives? And it always reminds me, I'll finish up now, but it always reminds me of the one quote by um, Sangera's book called like, em uh, From Empire Land. And he says that the problem arises when you begin to forget that the empire exists in every facet of contemporary society. And at that moment where you fail to remember what happened and is when all facets of society fall victim to the colonial syndrome. And in terms of colonial collecting, my doctoral research sort of focuses on how these stories and histories, cultural traditions, identities, and wider cultural heritage can be placed within the physical site of the museum. And it is an ongoing process. And my my research has trialed and we've done exhibitions with domestic um, domestic objects being used in separate museums. and. It's it's worked very nicely, but I am also very aware that my research is um is especially attuned to British South Asians. And but there is still the idea that, you know, a collection online or on site is as much about building a relationship with the community as it is arranging the physical objects and placing stories within the site of the museum. So yeah, that's my research.